My name is Charlotte and this is Real Thoughts. Today I will be reviewing Marvel's Inhumans which appeared on ABC on September 29th. Now this is a show that has been plagued with problems from the start, from being trusted to showrunner Scott Buck, from it being kicked off of the MCU's Phase 3 film schedule and being demoted to a television show. So now let's look at today whether this show still came out on top despite all of its troubles. Now the Inhumans are a race of people who live on the moon who are created by the Kree in the Kree Skrull alien war which are the two major alien races of the Marvel Universe and in prehistoric times the Kree took humans off of earth and experimented on them and they found out that these inhumans when exposed to pterogen crystals and the pterogen mist through a process called pterogenesis had fantastic powers everything from flight to clairvoyance and anything in between. Now we don't quite know how the Inhumans got on the moon because in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. it is touched on when the Terrigen Mist is released into the water supply that there are Inhumans on Earth. Now Inhumans are not mutants like the X-Men, they're different because they can control when they when these powers manifest unlike the X-Men when it's just at any time and place. Now specifically in the Inhumans focuses on the Inhuman Royal Family which is made up of Black Bolt who's played by Anton Mount. Medusa, who is played by Serena Swan, Maximus, who is played by Ewan Rion, Crystal, who is played by Isabel Cornish, Karnak, who is played by Ken Leong, Gorgon, who is played by Emmy Ickwalker, and Trident, who is played by Mike Moore. Now, the plot of this show focuses on the royal family, mainly the interactions between Black Bolt and Maximus, since they are brothers. When they were exposed to the Terra Genesis at adolescence, Black Bolt received the psionic powers, so essentially his powers are his voice, so if he even whispers, he can destroy a whole city block. If he can scream, he can destroy the entire planet. So he is a mute, and he is very revered since he has this almost godlike power. And Maximus, it is believed that he does not have a power. Now, there are moments in the show where there's tease that he might have a power, but I don't know how far the show is going to go into detail with that. And just the interactions with the royal family. So Medusa the queen, Black Bolt's wife, she has the power of this hair that's almost like steel. Gorgon is like a satyr, so almost a go man. So the top half is human, the bottom part he has these hooves. He can stomp around and destroy things with. However, I find the most interesting characters in the show to be Karnak, who has the power to see the flaw in anything. So he can essentially almost create a spirit being of himself. And before a situation plays out he can see all the possible outcomes and then evaluate the best one now i found that some of the best moments in the show were where they you were utilizing utilizing his powers properly and triton has the powers of a fish man however triton's powers aren't really explored besides the fact that he has a giant fin on his head there's this like green makeup and prosthetics because he is killed within the first five minutes that's the only spoiler i'm going to give in the show uh, for the show but yeah, Trident's dead, so I don't really know how much they're going to touch on his powers or they're going to touch on it in flashbacks and whatnot. So with the sibling rivalry being set up, the plot of the Inhumans is basically Maximus is going to stage this coup in order to get rid of the entire royal family. And he wants to go down to Earth where he can rule Earth with the other Inhumans of Earth where they don't have the caste system. And he's basically free to be their rightful king as he believes. Now, the rest of the royal family is not having this, and it's up to them to kind of stop Maximus and get back to the moon because what he has done is he has strategically placed them throughout the island of Hawaii. I believe they are on the island of Oahu. So the show is primarily shot in Honolulu and around the island, which is which gives very beautiful, breathtaking, establishing shots, very nice shots of scenery, and on Adelan on the moon which is not very nice it's very gray very drab dark dreary very futuristic but futuristic in the sense that we've seen it before so I enjoy the moments when they are on Hawaii just for the fact that it is prettier than looking at the moon however I really do wish that the moon would be stronger I forgot to touch on Crystal Crystal is Medusa's younger sister and she has 
the power of the elements down the show to the extent they show this is they show her making a little fireball or like freezing like a toy ball but that's pretty much it i don't know to what extent they're going to fully flesh out her powers if she's going to be as powerful as in the comics from the looks of this no she looks more like the next disney princess they can market and sell and make money off of toys and there's another character i also forgot lockjaw their giant cute adorable dog that teleports now the point is brought up that they did not have at the time where the inhumans were uh on the moon and were finding their society they did not have um domesticated animals on earth so some people theorize that lockjaw is actually a human who went through terogenesis and that his power is essentially being a teleporting dog which is kind of depressing so, um, a lot of the character interactions throughout the show are very awkward, and I don't blame the actors for that. I blame primarily the writing. Everything comes off as very stale, as very, we've seen this sibling rivalry trope before. We've seen this, you know, the younger beaten down brother is going to be king. We've seen this before. It's very faked, it's very forced. There's a lot of inconsistency with the characters, like Medusa in one episode she's very passive very damsel in distress but then the next episode you know she's kicking butt she's fighting one of Maximus's henchmen she she killed the woman she's like on her way to find her husband so I just want them to kind of figure out what they want to do with Medusa as far as that if she's going to be a damsel in distress that's fine as long as they can flush it off flesh it out and pull it off if she's going to be more of the kick butt very strong heroine that she is in the comics i would like to see them do that um black paul does not speak obviously so anson mount doesn't have a lot of lines he doesn't have a lot to work with now in this uh incarnation of black paul he does use sign language which is interesting and which i found pretty cool however his body language and a lot of the acting he uses through his eyes is still coming off as very rigid very uncomfortable a lot of the times he looks confused which is fine when he's on earth but even on Adelan, he looks confused or upset which hopefully i again understand that that's something very difficult to master but hopefully with time that performance will only get better gorgon is very much I would say comedic relief, kind of like the odd couple of Karnak. Karnak is very much of a nihilist, very analytic and very judge judgmental in this show in a sense where he's kind of the brains of the group and you see Gorgon as a bronze, so kind of like the funny character, the comedic, which sometimes his comedic time is good, other times it's just bad and out of place. So I hope they can find that healthy mix Gorgon I really like Karnak's character Trident's character I really don't know how to feel about Trident because he was on the screen for 30 seconds gave exposition and then five minutes later he was shot dead so that's that probably one of the other strongest performance is Maximus but that's because that actor is also plays Ramsey on Game of Thrones so he's been very typecast as kind of like the manipulative uh, sneaky character always trying to play his cards right always that has a ulterior mode which i liked him but again some of his lines just came out very boring and bland and you can see that he's trying his best but he's not given that much to work with crystal like i said before if you've seen any disney channel actresses any disney channel original movies in the last five years that is her performance she does not very she doesn't give very give up uh very much character so that's all about i have for characters on the humans now the plot of the show, as I explained earlier, royal family, they get sent down to Earth, they all get split up, and they all are trying to fight to get back to the moon. Now, the problem I have with this is that, okay, now they're on Honolulu, that's an excuse to do a whole lot of fish-out-of-water stuff, so, you know, funny gags with Medusa and Black Ball, because guess what? They've never been to Earth before, so, you know, that's just have them look out of place and do silly things because you know silly aliens don't understand earth it's not very funny some of it is kind of cute i guess but a lot of times just comes off as kitschy and i wish they would do something more clever i wish they would touch more on the inhumans that are living on earth but hopefully that will come along as since it is in the same universe as agents of steel so maybe we'll see more of that and at one point a crossover maybe if inhumans doesn't work out possibility of that storyline just being dissolved into the greater scheme of agents of shield now another problem i do have with this show is the action it is very hokey 
very corny, very much to the point where you will see someone throw a punch, but it's obviously three feet away from the guy's face. I know we're on a TV budget, but I have seen better action from the Power Rangers. I really wish, you know, this is a Marvel production. This is supposed to be, you know, a sci-fi thriller. I wish the action was a little more intense and less, you know, Star Trek, very original Star Trek series-esque. And another thing with the show is the stakes. The stakes don't very, feel very high at all. I know it's not a movie, but I really wish I could take it as seriously as the other Marvel properties. And as a final wrap-up, I will say Marvel should not have taken this off of the Phase 3 MCU lineup because it needs a movie treatment. It is a larger-than-life property. It does need a little extra TLC, and this is like if they took Thor and made Thor on the scale of a TV show. A by it being on a primetime cable network, it's kind of being pigeonholed into meeting certain expectations and meeting certain things. Even if this was a Netflix series and we went in the more gritty adult direction, I feel that Inhumans would need that. The only thing that will save this show is that if the script gets better, acting improves, sets improve, costumes improve. If the... If production and directors and the showrunners, if they take the show more seriously, I feel that that will totally improve the show as a whole. So these are, this was just my quick thoughts on the Inhumans. Um, see you guys soon for our next episode.